Hi, welcome to the Red Booth Show. Tonight's episode features Bill Suplee, also known as One-Eyed Willie from My Name is Earl. So we have a wonderful conversation about his history in the acting world and his experiences on the show and what he's been up to lately. Cut! Did we get it? I need to take a five. Hey, hey, hey. you don't want that. It's all jacked up and it ain't got no marble on it. It's not a problem. That's a straight up street baller move right there, Willie. How much, Carl? Three dollars and twenty-five cents. Uh-uh, no, that's mine. I had my eye on it way before you had your eye on it. I'll go four. Four and a quarter. Four sixty-eight. Five. Forty-five. So. Oh hell to the no. Every day's a new adventure. Thank you. Hi, Bill. Thanks so much for coming on the show. It's my pleasure. Everyone who also knows you as One-Eyed Willie from My Name is Earl. Mm, and that's true. Uh, I got back into the business after a 40-year hiatus. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That must have been a, a, a little break there, but, uh, you know, obviously we're lucky to have you back. Well, thanks. I... Uh, I was trained as a stage actor years ago, and uh, then, you know, I was in college, and if you want me to start at the beginning. Sure, please do. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> you ready? <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> uh, I, I went to a, a school called Carnegie Institute of Technology, which is now known as Carnegie Mellon. And before that, I went to Marshall University. And I was having trouble with grades. And so what happened was someone said, take this speech teacher's class and try out for one of his shows and he'll give you a good grade. And I go, oh, that's what I need. Okay, so I do that. And then one day I was on the stage and I thought, wow, I could really do this. Um, so what was your first play? The first play was South Pacific, and I was a sailor or something. But there, there, it was something very unique about being on the set, and a feeling came over me like, oh, I belong here, and I can do this. And, and so I, I put my attention on that, and I, I did several plays at Marshall University, and I did some community theater there, and then, as I was th thinking about what to say today, I actually went and borrowed money from my aunt to go to the Pittsburgh Playhouse. So I go to the Pittsburgh Playhouse, and then there was a war on. And I wasn't really, I, I, I didn't like that idea of that war. And so I thought, oh, I've got to get back into college. This was Vietnam, obviously. Uh, obviously. So I went to school. I, I went and I applied to Carnegie Institute of Technology. And I went there. And my idea was to do, to be a good actor. And there was a real good theater education. Well, then why did you decide to be a mailman? Well, no, oh, I'll get to that. Oh, it's coming, it's coming. The mail rang is coming. Oh, oh, because, because what happened was uh, I did summer stock. Mm -hmm. uh, at one time I did summer stock. And we were in the middle of Pennsylvania mm -hmm. doing the summer stock. And I was doing Stanley in Streetcar Named Desire. And this young lady, the ingenue, her name is Deborah, was doing Stella. And we were playing husband and wife. And that just kept going on afterwards and I've been married to her since 1965. Wow. So, and we're still That's together. Fantastic. Yeah, we still holler at each other and um, th then we went, I went back there and I went to, she went to New York and I went back, finished school and then I went to New York. Well, the, 
the thing that happened, you're a struggling actor in New York, what are you gonna do? Oh, here's a little play in, at Wheaton College. It's a girl's school and they need a guy who could not look too old but be like a father. And I had a big beard and so I, I do that show. And it was a wonderful show called The Empire Builders. It's a French farce. Oh, it's just wonderful play. And so what happened was my wife had got the tour of a play called The Fantastics as the ingenue. Now, they wanted if the So you were both obviously doing all of this theater together. Right, but yeah. still it was, it was, you know, we had odd jobs in New York in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And she had gotten her equity card and they wanted, if the ingenue was married, they wanted her to see if, you know, the husband could act. Well, I came back and I auditioned for the boy's father in the Fantastics and got that part, wow. got my equity card, and actually the boy was older than I was. No, <laughs> <Yeah>. what? <laughs> and oh, tremendous singer. Yeah. And what had happened was Jerry Orbach had just finished his run of the Fantastics and the guy taking over his place directed the Fantastics and his name was David Cryer. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. John Cryer's father. <laughs> wow. Wow. And then on the tour, the guy playing El Gallo, who was the lead guy, in the, was John Bennett Perry, Matthew Perry's father. Amazing. It's, it was just, it was just something to see. And you're, and you're Ethan Suplee's father. That's true. That's true. Well, that came a few years later when she got pregnant. <laughs> that tends to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And so we decided to, and it was natural childbirth in an apartment in New York City. Wow. Yeah. And so after that, we decided, after he was born, we decided to move to California. And we came out here. My daughter was born natural childbirth in the house where we were living. And I had gotten out of the theater. I had done, the one thing I do remember in New York that I did was a play called To Be Young, Gifted, and Black, which is a, a compilation of Lorraine Hansberry's work. Oh, uh, she just makes some beautiful pictures. And uh, it was like a year we ran off Broadway. After the opening, I went and played the old guy and the young guy. So then, anyway, fast forward to, I'm a painting contractor, that's the business I have in California, and one day, my son, Ethan, he said, oh, I was just showing pictures of his daughter Clementine to the producer, and the, my picture came up, and the guy said, who's that? And he said, oh, that's my old man. He said, oh, he could be the one-eyed mailman. <laughs> And I go, ah, oh, hey, listen, it's Hollywood. They're just blowing smoke up your pants. <laughs> and they shot a couple episodes. And one night, it, I get a call. Dad, you want to do that one-eyed mailman? I said, sure, I'll come and hang out with you for a week. That and must have been so fun because you get to be on set with your, with your son. Yeah, but I, you know, I've been out of the business. I didn't know what that entailed. Yeah. And this is, you know, all, all I was used to was the theater and here is this television is a big difference yeah totally and they kept asking me back and asking <laughs> me like, back. what's going on 14 episodes i did that's I amazing like, right and so then i well your character is hilarious i mean uh, it's fantastic i it, <laughs> you know in the beginning when i started i had no idea that it would evolve into anything and it did and uh, you know, when they, they wrote me extra things to do, Yeah, I w it was just amazing. And then... What was your favorite bit that you did on the show? Knocking out the eye. <laughs> oh, no, there was... I don't know if you remember seeing it. There was a, an episode where there was a game, and it's, a, a, you know, at a, a, a yard sale. Uh -huh. And I went up and I saw the eye and she said oh no it's mine she's gonna buy this game and we kind of fight over it for a minute 
And, I, and she said, well, it doesn't even have a marble. And I said, no problem. And I whacked it, and the eye fell down onto the gate. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it, there was, it was like a little running gag through that episode. And then at the end, her and uh, Earl, there, it was always a twist back, which I liked uh, about that show. Now, um, do you, were you like part of any of the creative process of your character? Like, did you give advice to them? And I know that like, they, they sort of wrote, they wrote the script themselves for that show, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, it was uh, the script, they would just call up and say, would you like to come back again? And I would say, of course. Well, sure. Sure. <laughs> you know. At the time I had no agent. I didn't know very much. Yeah. You know, about the business. I mean, there is the business and then there's the business. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a treat. But I didn't know a lot about the film mm -hmm. and all the cameras and all how close. What I was used to is the man in the back, you know, of the audience. I wanted him to hear and he was there was no back of the audience he was always very close with the cam with the microphones yeah so it, it's been a, a learning process and and what i did so you were used to being so loud maybe right yeah right yeah not necessarily so loud but just having the indication to the back of what you're doing mm -hmm. and so then i got in some acting classes and what i I feel I did was real important was go to USC mm -hmm. and audition for those movies for those kids. Mm -hmm. And then I, uh, one year, I think I did like 22 student films. Cool. And it, it, that's great, great for, you know, your experience with cameras and on set and everything, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there are some AFI mm -hmm. is amazing. Oh, yeah. I, I work there. It was some of these people had been out of school and a lot of the Scandinavian countries, the country will pay the tuition. Wow. So th here's a lot of kids who've been out, who've been shooting commercials and everything and come for a master's degree. I, I mean, I did one there that was just superb, it was just superb. Uh, and then it, there was, there's another school called, called the New York Film Academy that they have a, there was one writer there I've done two movies for, well, actually three. And it, it, it was something to be on set. There wasn't one cuss word the whole time you were on set. He, and he didn't, it wasn't like he heavy handed, but that was just his, he came from the Midwest and he was just a, and, and, uh, a good guy. And it was, it was wonderful to work with somebody like that. And I've, I've, there was a girl named Jen Page. She has a thing called Lumina Films. Mm. I've done three or four projects with her, and it's just, I'd do anything for her. She called me up, I, you know, an hour, she needs me for an hour, I would go and do it. And actually, can we go to this? Yeah, sure. Here is. These are the upcoming features that you're working which, on, right? Which you, well, this is this has already been shot. Mm -hmm. It's called Fantasy this, Calls. This, this camera here. Okay. There you go. And uh, here I am as the wizard, and it's they bring the. I could see you as a wizard. I think. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, my hair is still up. Your hair is still up. Well, you didn't know that. <laughs> no, we. Do you want me to put it down? No, it's fine. Wow, wizard hair. There See, you go. There, there you go. Now, that's a little... Th that's nice. official wizard hair for See? sure. Yeah. Why not? Uh, anyway, so that's that. This is a... It could be, and I hope it is, just terrific. Uh, the, the shooting of it is called Long Lost Pictures. Mm -hmm. Lex Benedict and Greg Cruiser. Mm -hmm. Uh, husband and wife team. And it's finished filming? Finished filming. Mm -hmm. uh, be out in uh, 2015. That's so cool. Mm. We have to take a quick break.
All motorcycle lovers out there, Glendo Harley-Davidson is where dreams and machines come together with the best stock of Harleys in Los Angeles. Glendo Harley-Davidson is a 21st century Harley dealer with a deep sense of history and culture. From our vintage motorcycle museum and amazing staff to our new model lineup, come be a part of American history. Check us out at glendaleharley.com for the latest events and specials. Glendale Harley, home of the Love Ride, the largest one-day motorcycle charity event in and here is another one. Okay. Fact, Shadow of a Monarch. Shadow of a Monarch of the Monarch. Which is a little mind game uh, CIA type film. Cool. It'll come out in 2015. Okay, cool. So, you know, I've been a little busy there. Fantastic. Yeah. It's like you're very much back into the acting world. It feels good. Another project that I have wrapped up was a thing called Never Mind the Dawn. Mm -hmm. And actually, at the San Diego Film Consortium, mm -hmm. I was up for Best Supporting Actor. Wow. But, Congratulations. Well, thanks. I lost it to a local. Oh, well. Oh, you were still obviously nominated. For yes, right. There right. You go. <laughs> Very cool. Go home, Pop. I don't feel like picking you up from the drunk take tonight. I'm the daddy. In case you forgot. No shit. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and pop open the hood and let me take a look? You know, that's funny. I'm sorry? You look like my ex-wife. Hmm. And we'll take a quick break. I really wanted to put a deck on my house. The floor was creaking and there were cracks in the wall. I had them put in walls in my basement. Well, the whole thing was done on time, on budget, and not a day of work was missed. Alpha Structural is a top-rate company. I'd recommend them to anybody. If you live in a hillside home and gravity is pulling you towards the edge of the cliff, I recommend you call Alpha. It was a real pleasure to work with Alpha. Welcome back to the show. Voila. 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 So, do you have a website that you want people to go to to check you out or? It's just the IMDB. Mm, okay. Yeah, my IMDB has every all the information there. That's imdb.com, and you can check out his profile for all the different projects. Sure. That... All right, uh, one quick thing I just wanted to ask you. Um, do you have any stories? Like, what was it like on the set for uh, My Name is Earl? Two stories come to mind. It, I, I'm very proud of my son and everything he's accomplished. One day I was outside a room where they were filming this scene where he was pretending to be an actor or something. And it went on and on and on. And he had a lot of dialogue and he, and then they real, hollered cut. And all the crew applauded him. Ah, what that does to a parent is just something. Just, just something. And another time, I, I, I got to drive the mail truck. Well, obviously, they let you drive the mail truck forward. Mm -hmm. But then someone else drives it backward. And there's a policeman there who stops the traffic and makes sure nobody gets hurt, and then you drive it again. And I was leaving set, and I walked in, and I thanked the guy, and I said, Hey, thanks for directing traffic today. And he said, you're welcome. And he said, you know, it's really nice to see that it hasn't gone to your son's head. Aww. Oh. 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 <laughs> believe me. Believe me. Uh -uh. That's a proud father there, right. you guys. Right. Uh, for all that we've been through as a family and everything, and for, to see him doing so well, it's it's something else. Wow. And to hear I'm that, so happy for you Right, and, and to hear that story from somebody yeah. who, it, it 
it doesn't make, he, you know, he didn't have to say that. Yeah. He really didn't. Well, he's a genuinely really nice, nice person, so. Which, <laughs> the cop or my son? Your son. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. my son's a good guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching Bill Suplee on The Red Booth. Welcome to the show. Tonight's guest is Christopher Hart, also known as The Thing from The Addams Family. And he's also a magician. So check out our interview. Welcome to the Red Booth. Today we have Christopher Hart. Christopher was a very special character in the Adams family, and that was the thing. That's, That's right. correct. There he is. Hold on. The hands. Hold on. There he is. Oh my God! There it is. There he is. It's the real one. Now it looks different with all the makeup and effects, but that's him. He's excited. He's excited to be here, Kimberly. <laughs> that's amazing. He's a little nervous. He's a little nervous. Oh my Stay God! Tuned. Look at that. He's a beautiful woman. He's he, has, he can't handle it. That's really cool. And you're also a magician, right? A magician, yes. Yes. Yes, I've done, uh, I, I've got a very famous hand, as you know, from, from Adam's family. That's right, my, your famous hand. My hand is actually the talented part of my body. My mm -hmm. hand's been in like six films, and I've been a nun. Really? It's very strange. Six films, not just Adam's family. Three Adam's family movies. I okay. did uh, uh, Idle Hands. You ever see Idle Hands? No. It was a horror movie. And my I remember hand, that. I remember hearing yeah, it was about a, that. A cult, it wasn't huge in the theaters, but it became a cult uh, favorite among like college students. And... Um, but it was I played an evil hand. 
Can I kill people? I'm just kind of. That's right. amazing. But I like Thing. He's very friendly. He's a happy friendly hand. Thing, Thing is more friendly, yeah. 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 There was actually an old movie called The Hand. You are correct. I remember yes. that. I watched it, and it scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, I, I collected uh, for a long time this different hand movies that were there, and there was Michael Caine one with the hand, and gets cut off. And, yeah, yeah. and then the idea. hand would like go and murder people. Yeah, same idea in Idle Hands. It was this hand became possessed on this kid, and then he cut off his hand, and it went and killed. And... Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a long history of hand horror movies. And <laughs> yeah, and Adam's family. And, but it was all related to me being a magician. I couldn't have done that role if I wasn't a magician. Because, because you have so many... Because it takes so much dysterity. I mean, agile, people don't realize... Lot, well, yeah, a lot of people think that um, uh, doing the hand is just like a movie effect, green screen thing. And yeah. I, I did green screen for some music videos for like MC Hammer and Michael Jackson, different things that promote the You did the, the hand? Film, I did the in in, in uh, yeah, for, for like music videos. But in the movie, it took me four months to shoot because they actually... It's like two hours of make to put a little rubber stump on my hand. Oh. And then they, and I shoot this film with all the real actors. Uh -huh. And I step out and they shoot it again. So they have a background plate, it's called. So they erase my body and then they fill in the hole. So uh, it took four months. It's very technical. Just all the um, rolling me down a street on a cart with my hand in front of me so I don't have a shadow on my hand. And that's the hard part. And then I got to keep within the, the camera length. And yeah, it's tricky. That's so. That yeah. sounds like fun, though. It's not easy being a hand. It's very <laughs> hard work. Yes. That's but, I, really but being cool. a magician helped. Yeah, I had to. Do that. Yeah, because you have to be so. Uh, you have to have so much dexterity, I guess, and like be able to do a lot. Well, of things. yeah, and and in the movie when I was before I got the role, the director and producer um, gave me an interview because not only did you have to have the skills, but you had to have the right temperament because I would literally be under tables for hours with my hand above my head, through a hole in the table. So. Uh, I told the director that, no, it's not a problem. I'm used to as a magician. You look in a mirror and you're doing the same movement over and over and over to practice repetitious. So this was easy for me, uh, uh, not difficult. Wow, that part. yeah. But imagine my first day of shooting, I was, they cut a hole in the tabletop and I'm underneath it and they put a hole through it and my hand comes through and then the set decorator comes and masks all that. And then I'm under there with a little TV monitor so I can see what the camera sees and it's a chess scene with Raul Julia where I'm playing chess. And then... 30 minutes of me That's going, so cool. well, yeah, and it takes forever, and then they bring in the actors. Now my hand, and all the blood's rushed out, so my hand is numb, and now i got to look at a little TV monitor and, and move this uh, chess piece, so that's the that was the hard part. But Oh, man. Anyway. So your hand would sort of fall asleep? You'd fall asleep, yeah. yeah. You'd fall asleep on the job. And do you have advice yeah. for me if I was going to do a hand, a hand, the thing? Well. I have too long of nails, I think. Uh, no, it's good. There was actually a little a female hand in the uh, in the, in the movie for a brief moment. There but, was. Uh, yeah, very okay. little, little interaction. That's really funny. Um, but um, but you know what? In the, in the script, what what was great for me is that the script would just say things scampers to the door, thing runs across the street. Yeah. You know that's all it said. It didn't have any real direction. So I had to come up with like funny ways to slide or or react. How you know he's maybe a happy little like a little puppy. Because yeah. the hands have no eyes. You know, you see every Disney cartoon, like a toaster that talks or a car. Yeah. Always eyes pop up, right? That's where the soul of the, the character is. The emotion. The emotion, right. right. So a hand doesn't have eyes. So you can only do it kind of with your action with somebody. or So So if you put your, put your hand up there, and I'll show okay. you some basic things. All right. So if you if you want to look around, you got to imagine your eyes. So you're kind of looking, right? And then if I was coming up to you and I, I was a little nervous, I'd, I'd, I'd be a little nervous. So I'd, right. So there, there you go. So <laughs> now you're scaring me. <laughs> Right. That's awesome. Right. And acting one on one. Thank so. you. I've just got my first lesson, and yes. I'm gonna definitely apply for the next um, Adams Family female right, right. hand part. I think coming up soon. Good. I like it. I like like it. Like it. <laughs> I hope they do some more of those. I think that was a great great. Series. I wish they would, because uh, maybe they'll do it. They, you know, they did the musical. Yeah. I don't know if you ever saw that, that no. was that's what's great about. Even though I did the movies a long time ago with mm. Raul Julia and, and. I know uh, he's passed away now. He's passed away sadly, yeah. but that wouldn't stop Hollywood from making another one. Thanks for watching Christopher Hart on... The Red Booth! <laughs>